All right, so we're back with round five. Um, this time we have two very well-known players from Europe. Actually, two of the most successful players this year. On the right side we have Robin Schulz, uh, a fellow Limitless TCG member, um, playing the Jumper Gabodo deck. And on the right side we have Pedro Torres playing, I think this is a join line Torres. They are both 4 0 um, trying to get the scores visible somehow. So Robin opens again uh, with a top of the for Bridget, which is probably what he wants to do. He also starts with a Drumper GX, which is the preferred starter in this matchup. Um, Jumper is actually the main attacker here. Um, between Jumpers and Garbage Hooks and, and Lake and Trash Lunch, you usually should be able to win against the Sidra Nightcats if you set up fast enough. However, if you let the Sidra Nightcats get the advantage in this matchup, it can go down the drain quite quickly. So again, the timer is probably off by a minute or so, but it should be fine. Some damage on Grandpa, which is quite important. We need to deal with Trumper as early as possible. Robin doesn't have a way to activate Berserk on the second turn, so if you can deal with Trumper by turn 3, you should be fine. So, yeah, um, he also gets the first Rowlet out on the first turn, but I don't think he has much more. He has only three cards in hand. So we probably won't see early decision right now. Yeah, we just see the sky return. Obviously it promotes the top of Lele because the Rowlet could get knocked out next turn with a Berserk for 80. And well this is not the perfect <laughs> setup for Pedro. The Sidra Night Hells is not dependent on being too fast, so it's probably fine for now. However, in the next few turns you should really hope for some deciduous to put on pressure. Alright. So already Robin Looks like he's getting out of Scarotox and Garbodor. So he might even be able to shut off abilities before they come into play. And he chooses to attach to the top of Lele rather to a jumper, which is interesting. Um, but obviously no spell is doing top of Lele can deal 70 damage this turn. While jumper does only 80 damage. 
which is not as usual. And yeah, it will be interesting to see how um, much damage Pedro can actually put on the board with his decisions. Because that's basically what this match come da comes down to. If the Garbotoxin lock lasts long enough, Robin will win because he does overall more damage with his basic Pokemon and the Garbodos. Also the Sidra Knight has sometimes needs to play a lot more items than you would actually think. Um, but right now looking at this list, uh, looking at Kidra's list, he even opted to play Trainer's Mail instead. So that's really interesting. He doesn't play um, he doesn't play Versus Seeker, so it's similar to Igor Costa's list from um, the North American Intercontinentals. Not playing Versus Seeker and changing to Trainers Mails just means that you're able to set up faster. But, so your early game is a lot stronger, but of course your late game gets a lot weaker also, because you play Trainers Mails, you get items in the discard pile more quickly, so Trash Lounge tends to deal more damage fast in this matchup. I really think on paper Robin is favored, but um, obviously a good decision player can still outplay the Dramper player. However, seeing as Robin is one of the best players in Europe right now, I don't think it's likely that he'll be outplayed. So as long as he can follow a strategy, he should be in the advantage. So on the second turn, the forest comes down, and it looks like Pedro is able to get at least the Decidra out. Yeah, he has a Sycamore and already Dartrix in play, so getting out one or two Decidras this turn would be great. No Garbotoxin is activated yet, and he could also deal some damage to the top of Lele. 110 damage to be exact, so that's quite a lot of damage on the second turn. So let's see how much he's able to set up this turn. So one decision right now. So far, so good. Also, it'll be interesting to see if he'll sacrifice his war picks later on for a better setup if it makes sense or if he thinks the nine tails is important in this matchup. I personally think nine tails is quite good against Trampa Garbador just because it kind of forces awkward decisions as long as you didn't have to play too many items. And this is exactly what you want. You need time, you need to force awkward decisions if you want to win with the Sidra nine tails against the Drampa deck. There we see the special Schulz card, Town Map. Yeah. We might already know that the Schultzes play Town Map in every deck that it makes at least a little sense in. Um, a lot of people don't like Town Map because as you can see right now, it gives your opponent information about your prize cards. Right now, for example, you see that not only two Drampers are prized but also two Floatstones. Robin now takes one Floatstone and one Dramper. And that brings us to the advantages of Town Map. Now he can take the perfect prize cards whenever he needs them. And this way he can plan out his game much better than without Town Map. If he didn't play the Town Map right now, he would have just drawn a Drumper and a Sycamore. But right now he just needs the Floatstone to um, get the Garbotoxin going. So already kind of an advantage gained through Town Map. And I think the disadvantage generated through town map is made up for like 
a lot of times by just the sheer power that you get by being able to look at your first cuts and take exactly what you need whenever you need it. But now, uh, since Pedro was able to get so much damage on the board, he's already able to knock out the Tapu Lele this turn. Also, the Drumper is already quite heavily damaged. So, sure looks like Pedro is in the driver's seat at the moment. However, Garbotoxin comes down this turn. And Pedro must have played quite some items up until now. So, it's still anyone's game. Yep, so there we go, two choice bands on two Trashland Garbodors. Obviously this becomes one of Urban's best attackers at this moment. We see how much ex damage it will do exactly in a moment. Robin and its Trashland. It's always an interesting moment even for the caster, because you never know how much items are actually in the discard pile. So as we can see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, yeah, six items in this cup, so that's 150 damage. That's quite a big number already. Pedro has to be careful not to play too many more items. It's already in two shot range from Galbador, and yep, this is how easily those games can turn. Also a reason why Cover the is probably the best deck in the format right now. You not only have those great EX attackers, uh, that huge consistency and the Garbotoxin, which locks down quite a lot of decks, you also have Garbodo, which is just an insane attacker. Just punishes your opponent for playing cards that help them to set up. Makes makes your opponent build their decks less consistent, makes them think about place they normally wouldn't think have to think about and yeah already Pedro is obviously forced to play some more items now after that ultra boy should have at least eight items in this discard pile and I'm sure there are more to come at some point he will be probably also forced to play as field blower I think one is already in this card pile, but I guess he has the second one left. And the Sidra really doesn't do much without Feather Arrows. <laughs> so he needs to find that second field blower at some time, or even um, use the Sidra's GX attack to get it out of the discard pile later on. So now he searches for 9 tails. He could use that to target down target down the Drampa because two attacks uh, on the Drampa with Ice Blade would mean a knockout. Um, and if uh, Robin attacks into the 9 tails, he can just use the, the GX attack. But we'll see if he wants to go with that. Um, looks like he's just licensing out a Trubbish. Maybe even still targeting down the Drampa right now. But he chooses to go for the Garbodor. He can also two shot Garbodor. Garbodor obviously looks like a bigger threat. But after he knocks out the Garbodor, maybe next time with another Ice Blade, Robin can just play a Rescue Stretcher or something to get it back into the hand and play it down yet another time. Also Roman plays for Float Stone, so the loss of that one Float Stone shouldn't hurt him too much.
Robin actually cut down one rescue stretcher from his um, North American Intercontinental list, but he still plays the one. So that's a possibility. But now he has the Versus Seeker to target down the already heavily damaged Decidrai and attack it for a knockout with Treasure Lange. Going down to two prize cards. And that kind of leaves Pedro in a difficult spot. He likes to promote the Decidrai rather than the Night Hairs. He probably has a float zone. Yeah, there we go. Float zone. Otherwise, the, he probably wouldn't do that. Float zone is obviously be, uh, the best. Uh, no, the Sidra is obviously the best target for float zone because it has the most HP. It won't get knocked out by travel trash launch in one hit. And now he still has a few options to go with this turn. Looks like he drew into a couple of grass energies, the come on and the level ball. Or uh, no, that's a DCE. DCE level ball to grass energies. So not too many options. He can probably attach a grass to the Sigilai to set up for a uh, razor leaf next turn. And just go with the knockout on Garbotoxin, Garbodor this turn. But I don't know, knocking out the Garbotox and Garbodor doesn't really benefit him too much right now. I mean, it's okay. But when he's gaining abilities, he's only really gaining 20 damage per turn at the moment. So that's not too huge. I mean, it could come up big, but it's unlikely. So he actually decides to go with the... The Sigilai GX attack, which basically means that he can't use the Ninetales GX attack later, so it must have been really important for him to use it, otherwise he wouldn't have done that. Also means that he basically is forced to attack with Ninetales next turn, unless he gets out another Sigilai or attacks Garbodor with an X hit him. Probably wants a field blow or two just to get rid of maybe choice bands and and the float stone. Can you also grab the Lysana? He needs that Lysana on the one hand because he doesn't play versus seekers of course, but it'll probably be important to close out the game. Because as you can see the Jumper is heavily damaged and it's worth two prizes, so obviously you want to go after that at some point. So Lysander is always great because you can't assume that Robin will just leave the Ramper active. Great. Looks like Pedro's counting out his items right now, so unless he goes off cam, we should be able to see how much items exactly he has in his discard pile. How many items. So, alright. There were a lot of items to say the least, but it's still obviously not enough for the Sidra no God. Yeah, and probably not enough to earn Antes no God either. Let's see what he drew after that end. Looks like a couple of items in Lysander. I don't know if there's any great play he could do. He could, yeah, he could go for the Shaman. That's right, and then Field Blower, the Garbodor. Play on Shaman. And yeah, I don't know. Hope to hit another Sidrai or anything that can't get knocked out. Or even promote an Onyx. But he can't really leave the Sidrai active. 
so he has to find uh, an energy, another floatstone, something like that. But do, while doing that, he also puts just more items into this discard pile, so that's a really awkward situation for him. Now he just lies in the Garbodor. So, a random possibility could be that probably never sees a flowstone again this game and will just lose due to feather arrows slowly chipping away at this Pokemon, but that's highly unlikely. Another level ball, so there should be plenty of items right now in the disc pile, and I don't even see anything in the stack anymore. Yeah, fails the search, which is really unfortunate because that just meant there's 20 more damage for Trash Lange in the disc pile. And he plays a trainer's mare. He hits the revitalizer, which is probably what he wanted to hit, but right now I. I really don't have any doubt in my mind that he Trashland is even able to knock out a Decidra GX. But obviously Pedro wants to prevent Robin from ever using Trashland again this game. Pedro will just snipe around around uh, Robin's board until he wins or loses, depending on Robin's scores. And yeah, basically this game comes down to if Robin is able to get the Scarbador out of the active board. If Robin is able to ever attack with Trash Lunch again on the EX Pokemon, he will win. But if he can't do that in time, yeah, he will just lose. So he puts 50 damage on the Drampa next turn, it'll get knocked out. That'll net him two more prizes, which means I think he can win in two turns time. And Pedro shows him a Decidra and a Dartrix. Yeah. So, yeah, he can't really put the Decidra into play next turn because he has no forest, but. Yeah, he only has deciduous and energies in hand. If he has really nothing more to say, Robin needs to get out the Garbodor. Um, needs to get the Garbodor out of the active spot in the next one or two turns. Uh, if he can't do that while attacking on, with Flash Lunch on any GX, he will lose. Actually, if he doesn't do anything next turn, he will, he will lose because next turn Pedro will be able to use two feather arrows, knock out the Trubbish and then knock out the Garbodor with nine tails. But he draws the Trouble later. Let's see if there's anything in this deck that can let him win. I think there were quite a lot of double colorless energies in this discard pile already. I'm not sure though if there were four. It didn't look like there were any floatstones left in deck. <laughs> and although the cam is lagging, we can see how much Pe how much fun Pedro actually has playing Pokemon. <laughs> That's just great. It's actually such an enjoyable opponent to play against. It's always making jokes and... Ah! Okay, Robin doesn't have floats on but he has a tool to prevent feather arrows. So that's something. And he has another energy, so next turn he'll be able to retreat. For sure. The awkward situation is Pedro can't really attack with the nine tails and not N Robin because he'll just attach another energy and retreat and knock out the nine tails. But if he doesn't attack with the nine tails, he can't really do much 
What he could try to do, if it's possible, is attack with the Mewtwo to knock out Garbodor. And N Robin down or something. And then next turn... And then next turn just use the other Feather Arrows to kill the Trubbish. But his hand doesn't offer that. Just has Grass Energies and Float Stones, I don't see an N. He could also use Dartrix attack, I guess. Dartrix attack does 20 damage on anything that's already damaged, I think, for a Carlos energy. So you could use that because it's a non exiter to soften up the Trubbish. And then maybe with some luck win next turn. But if the Dartrix gets knocked out, still needs a field ball. Yeah, it's a difficult spot. Really depends on what Robin has, and it looks like Robin has basically everything he needs to close out this game. Just barely, but it should be enough. But still not over yet. Definitely not a spot that you will scoop in. Yeah, you can just attack with the Dartrix attack and see where it leads him. And it's exactly what he's doing. So yeah. Now we see Lysen up his energy it should be game. Okay, it doesn't look like Robin has it already. Maybe he doesn't even have an energy to retreat because he has the Buster Seeker for sure and there's Lysen in the discard card so he can't have the energy to retreat. There are DCs in the discard pile, but should still have some. Now he plays Super Rod. He can shuffle back energies with that, for sure. So he is more likely to join to them in the next turns. Also picks uh, Trash Mage Garbodor because, of course, he wants to evolve the Garbodor with the Trubbish on the bench to prevent it from getting knocked out next turn. That's, a, that's definitely what you want to do here. But other than that, it's really difficult to say. It's a really tight game, also, resource wise. They are both kind of low on their resources. But. I mean, one of them will win eventually. Okay. Let's see. There you go, yes. He's drawn the energy off of the end. So now he can at least retreat and crash a launch. Right. The only way for Peter to win now is basically get the field blower and knock out the rubbish on the bench uh, with a feather arrow and knock out the Garbodor with um, ice cards. Basically everything is in one shot range right now for Garbodor, so Peter needs to win this turn. Otherwise, he'll just lose. So let's do or die now. Is there anything else people can do? 
And now he only seems like he only has an end in hand. Yeah. That's pretty brutal. I mean, he needs to hit the field blower now off the end. Otherwise, he loses. I don't know. Does he even have a field blower left? If not, I don't think. Let's still play. But yeah, it looks like Pedro is just out of options. Yep, and there you go. Pedro scoops. Okay, still, yeah. Last one would have been. if that was the last one. Okay. Yeah. Could have also lasted at the Trubbish and then hope that Robin is never able to retreat. Seems like he was out of field blowers in fact. So that was basically his last option to win the game. But uh, Robin showed him that he still had two float zones left in deck. Quite funny that he didn't join to them before the choice band. But in the end it still worked out for Robin and he won game one pretty convincingly. Saw some good plays from him. And I think we saw why he's up there in the top four of Europe. But we also have to get credit to Pedro. Did a good job in my opinion. Made some, made some interesting plays and kind of forced the sweat in the right game. And yep, it was a quite close game, but um, this is how this matchup tends to work out sometimes. Can get into these awkward games where the Decidra player tries to do some sneaky, cool plays to, to just out resource the Garbodo player and lock him in some way to win finally and the Garbodo player just tries to get through his strategy and um, hope that your opponent has to play a lot of items in the process of setting up so you can trash a lunch for lots of damage during the mid game and that's basically what happened this game and it was a little closer because Pedro was able to stall Robin for some turns against the odds because Robin still had the odds. But um, in the end, Robin won quite convincingly, I guess. Now Pedro opens a little better than the first game <laughs> with the forest and the dart tricks already. Also, has a DCE. Question is if you even want to attach the DCE to the dart tricks. He elects not to and just uh, plays a Shaman for two. Now he can attach the DC to Shaman to scary turn later on. And he can also use Ultra Paul to get out another uh, another um, Growlet and evolve the two Dartrix. But he actually decides to go the safe route and evolve to the Disenjoy first. And then play a Rest to Stretch on the Dartrix to shuffle it back into the deck. I think this line of play is fine as well. This way you can threaten, threaten a lot of damage on the second turn already. And he makes sure that he gets out of the Sidra this turn. So yeah, um, looking at his board after the first turn, that's probably all you can expect uh, on your first turn playing this deck. Although you play Trainer's Mails. Your setup isn't quite as explosive a lot of times. Looking at the timer, it's also quite problematic for Pedro because, as you can see, a little more than 15 minutes left, and this matchup isn't the easiest one, it's not the fastest one. 
those games are kind of grindy and turn to turn out to be much longer than you would actually expect. So I think all Peto can hope for this game is a tie. Um, because this game might very well finish if both players keep up the pace. But I see no way uh, that the third game will finish. Usually this matchup is not a blowover like for example if if Pedro played something like Vespiquen or Gyarados you could say okay if he gets a good setup he might even finish two games in 15 minutes but the Sijai putting 20 damage counters on the board each turn maybe attacking for average amount of damage that's not finishing two games in more than 15 minutes in less than 15 minutes if the opponent has any resistance to bring he has set up however it looks like Pedro gets out all of his stuff quite well we already see a second to sit dry while Robin wasn't even able to get a get a trubbish going on his first turn and also Pedro has a level ball so he might even go for more to dress but he likes not to play the level ball probably to save items of course you don't want to play too many items and going for a third to sit dry might even be a reach we'll be fine with two I guess so understandably Pedro just plays the end going for the more conservative route And well, he missed the grass energy right now, so he'll only be able to do feather arrows. But he can attack with beacon to set up further without playing items, which is quite nice. So Robin definitely needs to get out some flourishes this turn, since Pedro focus the decidrai damage on the tabulele he could even get a big grandpa berserk going this turn although he doesn't need to <laughs> since Wilpix doesn't have too many HP <laughs> and even 80 damage would be enough to knock it out but the main thing is just getting out trouble just this turn if you don't you're already in a really really bad spot Psychic energy on the top of area. It's probably setting up for some future plays. With that. And now, after that, end, he probably will probably know for sure he for sure needs to draw into his troubleshoes at least an ultra ball to get out some troubleshoes because he can't let two decidrias will away at your board like that for so many turns. So just retweet it and you speak wheel and Pedro motions the big wheel <laughs> that we already know from John Kettler from the North American Intercontinentals. It's always funny to see. They're both having fun. I mean obviously both players love the game, they're not salty at all about bad draws. The only thing that Pedro would 
like to have right now is maybe a third to dry and a grass energy. Other than that, maybe a DCE or some energy of any kind would be good for him. Let's see, yeah, with the energy. <laughs> But, I mean, he still has the better board position. So, as long as those whiffs don't continue for too long, he'll be fine. He can only do feather arrows and, yeah, it's just going for the Wolfix attack again. Searching out. Searching out probably a nine tails and oh, even another Wolfix. So, he wants to ensure to get out a nine tails at some point, at least. But those trouble whiffs definitely help Robin. <laughs> and immediately he puts down the rubbish. Yep, okay, alright, so now he has his first rubbish. Better than nothing. And he goes for a Lysander and 50 damage Righteous Edge on the Decidrai. That's a fine play. But it's also the play that he needed to do because now Pedro is supposed to retreat the Decidrai with a Flood Stone. Um, in order to attack with Ice Blade this turn. Um, if Pedro is able to attack with Ice Blade, however, finding a Float Zone and a DCE, he can knock out the Trubbish with another Feather Arrow onto it. And you see like that, that's the way the CGI can just run over Jumper Garbodor. It's pretty, it's pretty brutal to watch, but these things happen. Although, Pedro didn't with the energy, but he with the ice blade attack, which is something, I guess. So, there's something that Orban can use. Now he can evolve into Garbotoxin, or maybe Trash Lunge. Just evolve the Trubbish. That's the main thing. Trubbish are, are just so weak when your opponent can just ice plate plus feather arrow them. Pedro is taking back an energy and end and the float stone. Which is probably the best thing. He needs to attack with Ice Plate soon. Or he wants to do so at least. So obviously he grabs back the DCE. Float stone is always useful. And yeah, since he doesn't play supporter uh, versus seekers, taking back supporters is always great. But time is ticking down and still Robin is 1-0. However, if Robin's draws continue to be as unfortunate as they were up until now, I'm assuming that Pedro could very, re very well be able to close out this game in time. At least Rowan was able to evolve the Galvador, uh, Travis into Galvador, but not the Trash Lunge one, unfortunately. Uh, not the Galvatoxin one, unfortunately. Couldn't get out his ability lock this turn. So more feather arrows to come from Pedro. And right now, if it wasn't, if it wasn't as unfortunate, if it wasn't as close to timeout, I would probably suggest a scoop in the next three, two or three turns, if yeah, nothing changes, board state wise. Yeah, but right now, Pedro can just target on the Garbodor, next turn it will get knocked out by the Feather Arrows. There's no way that uh, Robin is able to prevent Feather Arrows next turn. He doesn't play Hex Maniac. Really, you can just put down more Trubbers, hope they survive, and maybe start attacking with Berserk. 
that would be nice I guess just putting damage on the Sigilize it's very important right now because you need to do something at some point and up until now he wasn't able to get much going the more troubles is the better he even discards the Garbatox and Garbatox to get out the troubles but I think that's worth it because Troubles are just a priority and you can always get back the Garbatox and Garbatox with the recovery cards that he plays he plays one Super Rod and one Rescue Stretcher so he definitely has options to get back this Garbatox also he wanted to play the Sigamo so of course you would discard the Garbatox Difficulty in this matchup kind of lies in predicting how it's going to turn out because there are so many variants, things that can happen. Like, the only thing we know for sure is that the Trash Lynch Garbador will probably go down next turn if Pedro chooses to do that. But beyond that, we don't know how many, how many Decidualized Pedro will be able to get out over the course of this game if Garbotoxin will come down eventually um, and if Pedro was able to take enough prizes in time so it's really difficult to predict uh, an outcome this game actually Pedro just chooses to put 20 damage on the Garbodor and 20 to the active which makes him able to attack for a knockout because Razor Leaf does 120 with the choice band that's obviously a really good play for him. But right now Garbatoxin is really in order. Robin just needs to get out the Garbato out of his discard pile right now. Because he can't really let Pedro get off more feather arrows than that. Already has used feather arrows since turn one I guess. So that was already t way too much damage that he got for free without, uh, without Robin being able to respond. So as we can see Robin could go for the teammates right now to ensure the Garbo draw. Teammates is a very good card in Trash Lunch, uh, in trash lunch decks. Uh, on the one hand you are able to stream Trash Lunch, on the other hand you can also grab some cool card combos like DC, Choice Band, Choice Band Field Blower to make some plays that you otherwise wouldn't be able to do. Also in the mirror match it kind of get, has the same effect as Sycamore if you don't need too many cards but you're just saving the items while you're playing with teammates. So it's a really good card in the deck and ever since I played it I would never cut it again I think. Oh, there we go, Gautoxin. That was important. And now he can also knock out the, the Sidrai with Trash Lange. So already looks much better for Robin, only due to teammates, because he could just grab the two perfect cards that he needed. Now, Pedro's left with the Decidrai that's already damaged. But, yeah. He can still do stuff. He can definitely go for the knockout on the Garbo Toxin Garbo again with Nine Tails. And he could also. Yeah, he. Needs to find field goal eventually. Um, and the thing is, he needs, still needs to take four prizes, and it still feels like a long way to go for him, actually. He really doesn't want to knock out the 
Gawa to the Cheshire Lange Gawa to on the bench right now. He'd just rather put 50 damage somewhere else. Because that's just a more useful way to get damage on the board. You're not wasting 30 damage if you're putting it on the Garbodor. But even if he's able to knock out the Garbodor eventually, he still needs to take three more prizes. Given the Trash Lunch Garbodor on the bench will be knocked out soon from a single feather arrow. But then he still needs to take two more prizes and Robin has a Trash Lunch Garbodor that's even able to one-shot the Ninetales. Wow, that's so huge. And right now I don't see Pedro winning this game. Time is ticking down. So right now he's losing the fight against both Robin and the time. <laughs> so it looks like Robin is definitely winning this game right now. Although Pedro was able to get a lot of feather arrows going. Robin didn't draw into his Garbodors. The matchup is just so favored that if you are able to get out Garbodors at some point and attack with Crush Lunge for a decent amount of damage, you will win. And this game was probably a perfect display of that. Robin really didn't draw optimally. And it really looked like it was kind of favored for Pedro for quite some time. But then Robin just was able to get out two traverses in one turn and evolve the one he had into Garbador and Pedro missed an important ice plate and yeah that's how quickly it can be over. But if it wasn't for time, I would say Pedro still has a slight chance because he can still go for the double trap like he did in game one and hope Robin doesn't have any outs but yeah Robin just has the first turn and it's game over. So that's it. Robin wins 2-0. That was pretty convincing. Especially the second game was just it was a great show of Garbodor's power, especially in this matchup. People think that the Sigil Knight has, has options to win against Garbodor, but really if the Garbodor player sets up there and if he knows what he's doing, which Robin does, there's not a lot you can do. And that's it, Robin will move on to 5-0. Almost locked up for day 2 already. I think you need 6 to 1 to be on the bubble for day 2 and 6 1 2 to be for sure in day 2. So he's still not through, but it's very likely that Robin will make day 2. And even though he lost, Pedro is still in a quite a good spot. I mean, after all, he is the international champion from Australia. So. He is surely skilled enough to make it to day two as well. But Robin is just a really tough opponent. So I think that game was, a, was quite nice. And yep, see you next round. <laughs>